If you hate the Dallas Cowboys, light up the comment section right now and type F Dallas. This weekend, I'm playing in a flag football tournament, and on Sunday, we get to play in Jerry World. I'm going to be wearing my Giants gear. I'll take a picture in the middle of the field at the, at the star logo in my Giants gear. I'll post it on our community post, and look, I don't mean to brag, but I've won a couple of championships in Jerry World. Can't say the same about Dakota Prescott. If you hate the Dallas Cowboys, go down in the comment section and type da F Dallas. Welcome into New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. In today's show, we're going to be talking about the latest Giants news and rumors. Should the Giants go out and sign Landon Collins? We'll also talk about that. Darius Slayton. There's been rumors from Zach Rosenblatt that the Giants are looking to move off of Darius Slayton as soon as possible, potentially a cut, or they could trade him if they have a trade partner. And then at the end of the show, I will give you three guys for the New York Giants that I think are going to break out and have better years than they did in 2021. A lot of reasons for that. New staff, new offensive line. At the end of the show, I'll give you three guys I think the Giants will have that will break out. But first, let's talk about Darius Slayton. Zach Rosenblatt, he put out a piece earlier today. He works for NJ.com. One of the best beat reporters that cover the Giants. Go give him a follow on Twitter, a great Twitter follower. This is what he had to say about Slayton. He said, it feels like a foregone conclusion that the Giants cut or trade Darius Slayton at some point before the start of the season. Doing so would save $2.5 million, and Slayton is making a bit too much money for a fifth receiver. And he also added this, Matt Parrott isn't even a lock to make this team at this point. Joe Shane is structuring this roster on how he wants it to be. He didn't draft Darius Slayton in the fifth round. He didn't draft Matt Pear in the third round. He's going to pick players and keep players on this roster that he picked. And that's smart. As a GM, you want to control your own destiny. He didn't draft Darius Slayton. He didn't draft Pear. He has no reason to keep him on the roster because, honestly, neither have showed that they're good football players. I like what Darius Slayton did his rookie year when he had eight touchdowns. But ever since then, his game and his stock has fallen off. He cannot catch the football. He's a good deep threat. I will admit that. Maybe if they keep him around, he'd be better in the Dable offense. But there's no reason to keep him around because right now the Giants, they need to come up with every dollar they can when it comes to cap space. And if you can clear $2.5 million to, sign, uh, to cut or trade Darius Slayton, I think that's just a move that Joe Shane's going to have to make. But what if you were the Joe Shane? If you were sitting in the seat of Shane, would you cut Darius Slayton? He's still okay, not a terrible football player, not the best, but I want to hear from you. Type C for cut, or if you want to keep Darius Slayton on the roster, go down and type K for keep. Story number two on today's show. Should the Giants bring back Landon Collins? Collins has been linked to the Giants by different media outlets as a free agent target all offseason long. He got cut by the Washington Commanders, the football team, whatever name you want to call him. I just call him Washington at this point. It wouldn't make some sense. I understand, and we can connect some of the dots here. The Giants, they have three safeties on the roster. Love, McKinney, and Belton. They have no veterans. At some point, you got to have some people that have done it in the National Football League. Landon Collins has, but if he wants to come play for the Giants, it'd have to be on a veteran minimum type of deal. And he's not the same player he once was. The injuries have started to stack up. In the past two years, of the 33 games that he could have played in, He's only played in 20 of them. He's slow at this point. He still can't cover tight ends. Giants fans know that very well. I'm just not in the boat of going out and trying a retread in Landon Collins. When you look at the depth chart, you got to go sign someone, though. You can't. I know they've, they added a couple undrafted free agents, but when you have Xavier McKinney, Julian Love, and Dane Belton as the only three safeties on this roster, you have to make a move. Injuries happen. You don't want to be depending on undrafted free agents. I think Xavier McKinney is going to show the NFL the type of player he is this year. I think he's really going to take, take a step forward in the Martindale defense. I like Julian Love a lot, but I like him more as a slot corner and a little bit of that free safety spot. The Giants don't really have that strong safety that the Ravens have had under Martindale. Landon Collins kind of fits that bill, but ah, I'm not that big on him anymore. I don't really like him. I didn't like the exit he had from the Giants. He said some negative words about us. But let me know what you think, Giants fans. Would you bring back Landon Collins if you could? Should the Giants sign him? They have a need at safety. He is a veteran. 
He was good at one point, and he's worn Giants blue before. So there's a lot of reasons to go down and type 21 in the comments section. If you want to sign him, type 21. Or if you don't want to sign him, if you don't think it's a good idea to bring him back, you can go down in the comments section and type P for pass. Pass, 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 pass on signing Landon Collins. It's over. It's done with. I know as fans, we hold on to these players. We love them. Odell Beckham, Landon Collins, Jason Pierre-Paul. They all have a spot in our heart because they wore the Giants blue. They were great for the Giants. But Landon Collins, he already kind of wore out his welcome with the Giants before he signed with Washington. And he's not the type of player that's going to excel in this type of system. He's not a good man-to-man -man cover guy. He can't cover tight ends. He can't cover slot, uh, slot receivers. At this point, he's just an over-glorified linebacker. And that's a position he said that he doesn't want to play anymore. If we want to take a trip down memory lane, he was great with the Giants, no doubt about it. He was a captain. The last, one of the seasons with the Giants, he almost won Defensive Player of the Year. 329 tackles in 59 career games. 22 tackles for loss. Eight interceptions. Four sacks. But that guy you see on screen, he's not that guy anymore. He ain't that guy, pal. Landon Collins at this point is a replacement level player who has an ego that still thinks he's one of the top dogs in the National Football League. You don't want to bring that type of player into a, room, a locker room in an organization that's trying to rebuild the team chemistry and the mantra of inside that huddle and inside the locker room. I love Landon Collins for what he did for the Giants, but at the end of the day, I have no interest in bringing him back to the Giants. But look, hey, if the Giants sign him or they sign someone else or any move the Giants make this offseason, we're going to be breaking it down on this channel, youtube.com slash TV. We pride ourselves here on Giants Now on getting you guys a video every single day about the New York football Giants, being the most interactive YouTube channel when it comes to the Giants, and when breaking news happens, we want to be first. So subscribe, turn your notifications on, because when James Bradbury was cut, we were the first video on YouTube discussing that topic. Subscribe, turn your notifications on, help us get to 9,000 subscribers. We're just under 500 away. Last topic on today's Giants News and Rumors segment, what about three Giants breakout candidates? We need some players to step up this year. Last year, some players didn't have seasons that we expected. This year, there's guys on this roster that if we, they want to be on this roster the following year, they got to play well. And the first guy, he has no choice but to play well because he's going to be thrusted into a starting role, and that's Aaron Robinson, the second-year corner at a UCF, the former third-round selection in the 2021 NFL Draft. I liked what I saw from him and the limited snaps that he got. He had an injury coming into the season, didn't play a lot, only played in nine games, but this is someone that didn't have a training camp. He didn't play in the preseason. He didn't get to get acclimated with his teammates early on in the season. But when he played in those nine games, his presence was felt. I like him best in the slot. But with the Giants secondary right now, he's going to have to be in an, an outside corner. Last year, he had 149 outside corner snaps compared to 92 in the slot. His best game was against the Philadelphia Eagles, where he was targeted six times, allowed just one reception, had a pass breakup, and played 27 snaps on the outside. He also played really well against the Miami Dolphins. He lined up on Mike Gusecki some. He lined up on Jalen Waddell. And in, in that game, he played really well. He also played well against the Los Angeles Chargers. In the Miami Dolphins and Los Angeles Chargers game, he had 109 snaps at the outside corner spot, was targeted 12 times, did allow nine receptions, but just 76 yards. When you get, give up nine catches for 76 yards, you're doing a damn good job. He's a physical corner, six foot one, almost 200 pounds, likes to get in your face, likes to play a little bit of man press coverage, and that's what's going to happen on Sundays for the Giants under Wink Martindale. They're not going to play any more of that timid and scared, bend but don't break defense that we've seen under Patrick Graham, who I think is a good defensive coordinator. Thing is, I think Wink Martindale is one of the best in the NFL, and if you go back and look at the stats, during his time with the Baltimore Ravens, that'll back that, back that up. This is going to be an aggressive defense. They're going to blitz a lot. They're going to have a lot of scheme work. And I think Aaron Robinson has a chance to make his case known as the future number two corner for the Giants for a very long time. Honestly, he has no chance or no other opportunity to break out, or he may not even be on the Giants next year. But can Aaron Robinson 
be the Giants. Number two, long ter- long term corner. Type Y for yes or go down and type N for no. Kenny Galladay. He's my second breakout candidate. I think what Brian Dable did with Gabriel Davis is what you're going to see with Kenny Galladay, except better. Uh, Davis, he's had 35 catches the past two seasons. That bigger X receiver that runs your more end-breaking routes, but send him on a deep route, something that Jason Garrett did not do. Kenny Galladay is a deep threat receiver. That's what he was with the Detroit Lions. There was plenty of times Matt Stafford would drop back and say, F it, Kenny Galladay down there somewhere. And that's why in 2018, he had 15.2 yards per catch. In 2019, when he had 11 touchdowns and led the NFLs and receiving touchdowns, he also had 18.3 yards per catch. And the next year, 17 yards per catch. And this year, all he was asked to do was run quick slants and stop routes. That's not going to be the case this year. Brian Dable is going to make life for Kenny Galladay easy, much easier than it was last year for Jason Garrett. We heard early on in the season that Jason Garrett and Kenny Galladay didn't get along. There was a blow-up against the Washington football team. Galladay said, throw me the damn football. That's what I want out of my receiver. Don't be over the top, but be confident in yourself. Believe that you can win one-on-one matchups. Kenny Galladay, he's not the ultimate separation guy. He doesn't create a lot of yards of separation on his routes, but he has some of the strongest hands in the NFL, and his contested catch rate has been at the tops of the NFL when he was with the Detroit Lions. So even when there's a DB draped over his back, it's on Daniel Jones to throw him the football and trust his 72 million dollar receiver to come up with the football let's play a game though a little bit of over under what about five touchdowns for Kenny Galladay last year it was zero so I didn't want to go too high I'm typing O for under I mean O for over I think he's going to have more than five touchdowns but I want to hear from you type O if you think he's going to have more or U for under if you think he has less than five touchdowns again what about another receiver what about the joker Kadarius Tony? The bar's low for Tony and Galladay. I will admit it. Zero touchdowns combined last year. But I truly believe that Kadarius Tony is going to show why. That he was a first-round selection in the 2021 NFL draft during the 2022 NFL season. Look, looking back at last year, he wasn't that great. He did have a great game against the Dallas Cowboys. He had, what, 189 receiving yards, 10 receptions, with Mike Glennon throwing him the rock? This year, in an offense coached by Mike Kafka, and Brian Dable, Kadarius Tony is going to be running wide open sometimes. And when he does that with the type of speed he has, he's going to be able to capitalize and make plays at the wide receiver spot that we haven't, set, haven't seen since some guy that had a blonde mohawk in war number 13. Kadarius Tony is one of the most special athletes in the NFL. This is someone that played quarterback in high school, got recruited to Florida, and switched to wide receiver. He's still learning the position, but he has no reason. And he doesn't really have any other choice but to break out this year. Because this wide receiver room is depending on him. Sterling Shepard, can we count on him to play 17 games? In a perfect world, I would hope so. But we haven't seen that in a while. He's been hurt. Kenny Galladay, he's a breakout candidate for me. So I think he's going to have a good year. Kadarius Toney could end the season as the second best receiver and the second most productive or potentially first most productive receiver this season. Tony has a rare ability. What he's able to do in space when the football is in his hands, as Joe Shane would say, he's a generator with the football. More often than not, he's going to make that first guy miss. He's in a phone booth. Good luck touching him. This is someone that has special ability, ability that a lot of people in the NFL wish they had. I don't want to say he's like Tyreek Hill, but he's going to be used in that type of way in this offense under Mike Kafka. It's going to be on him at this point, though, to be on the field, to be dependable, build a rapport with Daniel Jones, and show Giants fans that you care about the football football side of things and also care about winning. Because if you don't win in New York, it doesn't matter what you do. Ask Odell Beckham. At some point, Giants fans are going to lose interest in you. I do think Tony, though, will have a great year for the Giants this year. I gave you three guys, Aaron Robinson, Kenny Galladay, and Kadarius Tony. But this is your chance to be a part of the show. Let me know. Who do you think will be the biggest breakout player for the Giants this year? If I had to name a fourth one, I would say Tay Crowder. I like what he has done, gotten better every single year, and I think he could do well in a Wink Martindale defense. But let me hear from you. Who will be the biggest Giants breakout player this year?